Indian Mounds National Historic Landmark. So this is a place we've never been because we're always too tired by the time we get to it. So we're starting with it today. We made it to this one time and we were like, no. I want to say I laid down in this shelter and like cried from exhaustion. Like, <laughs> I couldn't take another step. It was hot weather. Shiloh, in any kind of warm weather, is a monster. Fortunately, this time it's fall, and there's the shelter with waysides. It's like being a visitor center without being a visitor center. We are entering the largest surviving prehistoric site in the Tennessee River Valley and one of the least disturbed areas of earthen mounds in the eastern United States. That's huge. Early European settlers were familiar with the site. After the Civil War Battle of Shiloh, members of the 28th Illinois Infantry buried their fallen comrades in the westernmost platform mound. Their bodies were later reinterred in the National Cemetery. Thanks to its early inclusion in the military park, the site of this ancient town was never plowed. Wow. I love seeing land in America that's never been, like, Yeah. Burned. That's very rare. Like in the, uh, the tall grass prairie preserve. Yes. So we're gonna take the 1.1 mile interpretive loop trail through the grounds and back to the parking lot. Now, an important note, it's gonna look very different than it does here because this is showing as it, as it was, I believe. In the year 1200. So now it will simply be mounds in the woods. And we've driven through this before because when you leave Shallow Park, you drive, kind of weave through these, so there's a road Mississippian Indians. Now this is important because this tells what era of Indians it was. The Mississippians, the ancient people who lived here, were unlike their ancestors in several ways. Instead of being nomadic hunter-gatherers, they were farmers who devised an agricultural lifestyle based on corn. They settled in towns along the Mississippi, the Tennessee, and other southern, uh, southeastern riverways and traded goods with other American Indians in the eastern United States. Mississippians developed a leadership system of hereditary chiefdoms and built mounds of governmental buildings, temples, and notable burials. At various times, leaders have come from different opposing clans within the community, though the Mississippian era lasted from about the year 1000 to the early 1700s. It flourished here at Shiloh only from 1100 to 1300. Archaeologists are like detectives. They gather evidence, look for clues, and make educated assumptions. The people who lived here did not leave behind any written records, but they did leave earthen mounds, pieces of pottery, stone tools, bits of mica, and other artifacts. Archaeologists look at this evidence piece by piece and compare it with what has been found at other American Indian sites. Gradually, they develop the story of everyday life at Shiloh Indian Mounds, the saga that continues to unfold as investigative techniques improve. The Mississippian Indians, unless I'm very much mistaken, predated the Creeks and the Cherokee. They were the ancients. And then there's this. This is a really neat map. The it dots is. are the walking trail. These are the interpretive markers. Wow. These are house mounds. And this is the present day road. So we're gonna be on the walking trail. Wow, interesting. Time to break out the gimbal and the big camera. Switching over to the thing I never use, my gimbal. I'm finally using it today. Oh. And I'm carrying this the whole time? You don't have to. <laughs> the gimbal is magnificent for filmmakers. You get the great depth of field of a big camera without the shake. We step into this ancient land, which is itself a museum. A thousand years ago, this was a city. And it's a history in layers. A thriving metropolis a thousand years ago, which eventually became empty. Years later, the Civil War comes. There's fierce fighting, bullets flying between the mounds.
finally taken over by the National Park Service and both histories preserved. It sure is pretty out here. We come across the first marker on the trail. It tells of the construction of a defensive wall that once stood yeah. here. Low ridge you are about to cross is all that remains of an extensive wall that protected a small town located here about 550 to 950 years ago. Life here was generally peaceful, but the townspeople must have felt threatened at some point and built this palisade. Yeah, because there was fighting. To build the wall, they placed wooden posts in the ground six to eight inches apart, lashed them together with slender branches, and covered the branches with clay. The palisade deteriorated over the, a 10 to 20 year period. Residents apparently never felt the need to replace it. It's been <laughs> so long we have no idea why they felt the need to build the wall. Time is a strange thing. Let me carry that. This part of the park is relatively small, but it's a place you can immerse yourself without distraction from the outside. You would never know that Shiloh Battlefield is just beyond the trees. As you walk through the town site, look for small earthen mounds similar to the one next to the wooden stake and the other mounds in front of you. These mounds are the remains of wattle and daub houses in which most of the town inhabitants lived. Do you see a wooden stake? Not right off the bat. We never did find the wooden stake. Maybe it's a head. I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> We continue on. It's a very peaceful and serene place. We are not what Stacy would call salty. Yeah, I use salty like an old salt, you know, somebody who's experienced. I noticed in the South, people will say salty and mean like you're an unpleasant person. Which is ridiculous, because salt is delicious. <laughs> Regional dialects. Interesting, I guess the, a storm uprooted these. In a swampy area. The depressions, or wet weather ponds in front of you, are holes where residents dug up clay to build their wattle and daub houses. Wow. Here and in, in the nearby ravines, they also borrowed soil to construct the large mounds you will see farther along the trail. That's interesting.
And we're coming up on a mound. Oh um, yeah, I think this is the 28th Illinois burial site. Oh. So here you see the little ponds. There are several of them. It shows you just how much dirt was excavated to make the wattle and daub houses. And over here, A ceremonial mound which became a cemetery and back again. And at the top there's a marker. So are we supposed to walk up here to read it? Infantry bodies removed to the National Cemetery. Interesting. So they buried them up here until they were removed to proper burial. That's the direction we have come from. You're entering the heart of the town, a fairly level plaza stretching from here to the edge of the river bluff. The large mounds you see here served as elevated platforms for civic buildings, temples, and homes of prominent leaders. Between 1100 and 1300, this town was one of the largest and most impressive communities along the entire river. Several hundred people lived here and others came here regularly from villages and hamlets up and down the riverway, just as people might drive to Nashville or Memphis today. Wow. The Mississippian culture, like many others around the world, associated leadership and power with high elevations. In ancient Greece, temples and civic buildings were located on the Acropolis, the uppermost part of the city. At Tail Leucan in Mexico. I cannot pronounce that. I'm sorry, y'all. In Mexico, temples were placed on high pyramids, and in Washington, D.C., the U.S. Capitol sits on a hill. Wow, even to this day, we still do that. Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. Accent over the A. I don't know if it means the same thing in their language. I couldn't pronounce non pareils. I'm certainly not going to be able to pronounce this like 20 syllable <laughs> Mexican city. <laughs> I'm not salty with this gimbal, y'all. Hopefully, this footage is looking halfway decent. Okay, there's the mound we just came from looking at. That's the one that the soldiers were buried on top of before they were reinterred. Here's more borrow pits. We are standing on a place that is a little bit higher. This is a dugout area, but I don't know if that's 
this natural landscape. Or what? This is the first aid kit in here. What if one of us stubbed our toe? <laughs> <laughs> this wayside says signs of prestige. Besides elevation, a person's social status may have been related to whether he or she lived near the center of town. A prominent family, for example, might have lived here. Small house mound before the road. Because their house was next to one of the large platform mounds. Small pieces of mica were found in the collapsed debris of the house. Mica, a valuable mineral used to make ornaments or pigments, comes from the southern Appalachian over 100 miles away. Wow. It's amazing how extensive the Indian civilization was. Here's where the road passes through. We make our way toward the big mound. Coming up. We explore, discover, and see some river traffic. <laughs> 